What's up everybody? Welcome to Today I Work On. This is a very special, important episode. It has to do with the safety of you and your loved ones in your house. Now, as you see, I have a lot of snow in my yard. We got pummeled with snow a few days ago. Pummeled. 10 inches of snow. It came down in four hours. It has to be, look at this. It has to be, the, this is, it just accumulated on everything. Branches fell, I have a big branch that fell here. My trees were bent like this. It was insanity. And a lot of people I know lost power. I-95 has been completely closed in my area for the past two days. It's chaos. And all I keep seeing on Facebook is people have no power. And I wanna try to help you out with this because if you do a whole house generator setup, we're talking between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. Because if you don't have gas, you need a propane tank. If you have gas, it's a little bit cheaper. But most people have electric here, and they need to put in a propane tank. So that's a big problem. Now, if you have propane or if you have natural gas, this is a huge, 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 cheap way to keep your house warm and I'm gonna get through all of that now. Now, if you don't have a propane or oil or gas furnace, I could give you all the power that you need minus your HVAC, unfortunately. Now, can you power space heaters? Yes, but this video is geared towards people that have either gas, oil, or propane. So keep that in mind. Now, you still can use this system and save a ton of money by having most of the power in your house, but it's not gonna be as warm for you in your house, but you could survive with this system. And I said, you're gonna save between 10 and $15,000. So let me get into what I did to save a lot of money on a generator backup system. <clears throat> first things first, let's start off with what powers my backup generator system. It is, now it's my 5,000 watt Coleman PowerMate generator now a max it goes max to 6250 this generator is no joke it's 15 years old i bought it in 2006 i think i've changed the oil on it twice i don't treat the gas i don't do anything with it but it is a champ it ran for four hours on well a few days ago and it's just been amazing now that's the first tool you need. You need a generator. I do have the backup generator in the garage that actually puts out almost 9,000 watts, but I've never needed it because this one has not broken yet. So it's literally sitting, it's been sitting in the garage for three years and I like backups. So this is how I work. That is our first tool that we need. Now, the second tool that you need, <laughs> you need gas, okay? Usually I would say between 10 and 15 gallons is sufficient if you live in a heavily populated area. This will last you about three, four days. And then you have to go get gas, go get gas. Uh, because most gas stations do have power and they are supplying gas. So that's not, unless it's like a complete disaster, you need 20, 30, 40 gallons. But usually I run with around a five gallon, one five gallon uh, container and then I fill it up and then I have an extra five gallon container. This storm actually went and filled up and got 10 gallons plus what was in the generator because I had no idea how bad it was gonna be. But I probably went through three or four gallons and now I have a ton of gas left. So that's good, I'll use it for all my other tools. Secondly, this is where you save all the money in the world. If you follow this line right here, I have what's called a transfer switch plug. Okay, this is a Reliance plug. It's a double 30 amp, okay? So that is what's feeding what I have downstairs and I'm gonna get into what the huge money saver is right now. Welcome to my transfer switch. This is a ProTran 2, okay? It has 10 total circuits and then it, it lays everything out for you. And this is what I have labeled. So. The AB, which is a max double 30, which is a 240, is my hot water heater. Next up, I have my well pump, because that's a double 20, also 240. So if we are on well, you need one of these transfer switches. Then we have what? We have my HVAC system. Now this HVAC is a regular 20 amp, and all it does 
it turns on the electronics on the HVAC system and turns keeps the fan on. So if I need gas heat, the fan will supply the gas to move the heat, which is very nice. Next up, I have my freezer that's right next to me, my softener, my neutralizer, because I have, I want to keep those, th those machines going if I'm running water, water through them. And then next up, I have like my kitchen, my living room, and like my dining room lights, uh, which is very important because that's where you're hanging out most of the day, right? You're not really in the bedrooms. Next up, we have my kitchen outlets. So if I need to run a toaster or a plug-in microwave, I could do that. Uh, the stove is on, so the stove is gas. I still have, we still could cook. And then I also have the fridge, which is upstairs, so my food doesn't go bad. And then lastly, I just have the bedroom outlets because I could plug in my, my iPhones or whatever. And if I want to throw like a temporary light in there, I could do that. So this is the this is the transfer switch I recommend. Uh, I'll put up a link on this. And how to work it is very simple. So right now we're online because we're on regular power. If we lose power, I go to gen. So I just flip all these switches on. Now, it this meter also it also has meters, right? So you have meter one and meter two. Meter one, that controls one hot side of the generator and then meter two is the other that's why they call it 240 volts so a c e g and i is one side b d f h j is the other side of the 120 so 120 120 is 240 you do not want to overload one side of the generator because then you could have problems and then you could blow up your generator which you don't want to do then you're going to be cold and freezing and sad to hook up this system it's very simple you see all these red and black lines? All you basically have to do is pigtail them. I took off the panel so you could see it. Uh, this is my secondary panel, but that's, and then they're all labeled. You can see this one, it says J, right? So J is here. So that J circuit controls what? The bedroom outlets. So that's basically pretty damn simple uh, for the, transfer switch and lastly this right here this orange line that's a 30 amp circuit that goes to the plug that's outside so it's a very short run i was very lucky it was a very simple uh setup to run all the lines here so that's basically how the transfer switch works and the one that i like most so let me i'll recap outside right, so that's a quick summary of how this whole system is set up with the generator with the the plug going into the transfer switch plug to the actual transfer switch to how it gets hooked up into the panel now the biggest question is how much does this cost it doesn't cost much all right we have the jenny could run from you could buy a cheaper one for 400 bucks and then you could spend more money you know 800 to a thousand on a bigger generator which is the one I have sitting in the garage, which is almost a 9,000 watt generator. Uh, I think 5,000 is fine for most applications. I get away with it, so it's fine. And you'll probably save a, a couple hundred bucks on that. So that's, you know, say, oh, all right, we'll split the difference, $600. To buy the actual transfer switch, it's around four or $500. So we're at $1,100. Lastly, we're gonna have the labor for an electrician to install the transfer switch, which is pretty easy. If you're pretty handy, you can do it. Uh, you're talking probably between 600 and 1,000, depending on how greedy the electrician is and how busy they are, because all of us in the trades are super busy and we're able to charge right now. So, uh, and electricians are on the higher scale of their uh, labor rate. So that's basically the number. So you're talking around $2,000. Now that's a huge savings. Instead of getting this for 2,000, you could spend 10, 15,000 for a whole house generator. And I don't see the need for a whole house generator. I've installed them over the years. I installed them for my clients back in the day. And after I saw how the transfer switch works, I, I, if I thought it was worth it, I would have one at my house but I put my money into my better HVAC system with a dual fuel system instead of getting a, uh, a whole house generator because there's a lot of maintenance involved. That thing has to run once a month, oil changes, 
you know, a, there's a lot of stuff going on with those. They need to be they need they need to be maintenance. So it's not just ten thousand dollars. It's more. You have to have someone coming out every year to look at it. It's just it's just too much money for something that you don't use very often. I probably have used this since I've owned it for fifteen years on my transfer switch, and I've always have lived in a wooded area probably two thousand times, and I'm gonna say probably. 30 hours total time I've been lucky that's this video if you have any questions on how this transfer switch works please leave it in the comments and I hope this video gives you a visual on how easy and cheap and effective this whole system is so thanks for watching if uh, you like this video please like it if you like these types of videos where I give my tips try to save you some money please subscribe and stay safe, stay warm, and I hope eventually the people that don't have power get their power back on. Take care.